Hey guys, this is Albert. I uh, hope you all are doing okay out there, staying safe and healthy. Uh, so in this video, I want to talk to you about the uh, Blackmagic ATM Television Studio HD uh, and uh, the things that it does, things that it does not do, uh, the many problems you are going to encounter while using it how to work around it, and then what alternatives you have. So this may be a long video, and therefore I will cut it short into different uh, segments and upload them in different parts. Okay, so at a super high level, this is a switcher, which means you can add up till eight cameras to it. So at the back, you will see it has four HDMI and four SDI as input, and uh, it has a bunch of out, you could connect um, this is the multi-view, which means you can connect it to an external display. It will show you all of the cameras attached, so you can pick the one that you want to stream. Um, it also has some other outs. Um, I think a few other things to note is it has a couple of um, XLRs in here as input. So if you want to connect your external audio device like a mixer, you can use the XLR, which is a good thing because it will synchronize the audio and video, so you won't have the delays. Um, okay, and then here in front you will have, uh, this is the display panel that will show you the camera you have selected. You can pick which one, which camera you want by picking the numbers over here. Okay, so that's at a high level. Now, um, been using this for like less than a year approximately. Um, and before I bought this device, I was uh, looking to uh, solve a couple of problems. One was that when I would uh, live stream worship from my home studio, I wanted to have a setup where I have multiple cameras and a device that could support all those and can stream the one that I pick, which means the live stream over the internet. Um, and the other one was when I uh, invite um, a band for a multi-track recording, I wanted the ability to stay in my control room and then uh, be able to record all of those cameras on this device. So what I was looking for was a device that would do uh, switching, live streaming, and recording. And then I uh, you know, did not do a whole lot of research and I was looking at this device. So I made a few assumptions and I bought this and I found out that this device only does switching. It does not do the recording or the live streaming, which is really, really unfortunate because those capabilities are kind of standard that you look for today. And this device is for like $1,000. So I don't know what prevented Blackmagic from supporting those features here because they, um, it, 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 from a software standpoint, it's not hard to build. And, um, and, and uh, they have, I know, launched a, a smaller version of this device called the Mini, which actually does all those things. So don't know whether it was an oversight on the part of Blackmagic or whether they just was intentional business decision so that they would want you to invest on, on higher products. I don't know, but it's, it's, uh, I was very disappointed to note. So I'm just calling this out so you guys don't end up in the same problem. Okay, with regards to the issues you will face, the first issue you will run into is the camera compatibility. So when you switch in your, you're plugging your cameras to this device, one thing to know is that uh, the frame rate that you set um, at, at this device has to be the exact same frame rate for all those cameras you plug in, otherwise it will not work. And what it means is that, let's say you want to um, configure at 1080p, let's say at 60 frames per second. Um, your cameras have to be at that exact frame rate, otherwise it will not work. Now again, I don't know why Blackmagic did this because it's not really hard to be able to support upward on conversion the software. And uh, now what happens is you are stuck with all these cameras that may not work, which is what I went through. I had to run through a whole bunch of cameras. Almost all of them did not work. I don't know for what reason, but long story short, the camera that worked for me was this one, uh, the Canon Vixia HF R800. And I went with this because this was like, you know, falling in my budget of $200 and it worked with this device. And just so you know, uh, in this camera, it is, it is hardwired. So there is two configuration. One is the recording configuration. It's different from the live streaming configuration for live or for streaming configuration. The streaming configuration is, is hardwired to 1080p 60. So uh, you can't play with other configuration options. And so 
uh, on this device um, you will note that it doesn't support exactly uh, at 60 frames it does like 59.97 i think which very fortunately and thankfully it worked it was able to work with 60 frames um, but then if you if and so i bought a bunch of them but remember that you will be locked in to the 60 frames per second uh, you can't change that so that's one issue that you will run into and the second one is that i noted is uh when i plugged in the cameras here in my control room uh via the hdmi it worked and and i think uh because this switcher supports both hdmi and sdi sdi is usually what the pros will use just because of a better superior quality but it's very likely that if you are not at that category you will end up where i was playing with hdmi input so just to be uh, cautious here that hdmi has a limitation of thing like about 50 feet or so and the problem i ran, ran into was that uh, the hdmi cables in my control room they were able to work when um, i plugged in my cameras to the switcher but when i went to the event in my church and i used a longer hdmi cable it just wouldn't work and so that's when i found out that longer hdmi cables usually run into a problem so the there's a way to get around that and what you could do is basically get a device that can boost the hdmi signal and so i bought this device the rei hdmi splitter so fundamentally what it does is you plug the uh, the the handy cam into this device and from here you plug in your your hdmi cable and so this device adds the extra boost to the signal that is needed to travel all the way to the switcher. So, um, so that's, um, that's about it. Now, you know, I, I just given the nightmare experience I had with this device, um, I just, I would give it a poor rating, maybe like two out of 10 or so. Um, and, and it just beats me why uh, Blackmagic decided to make it so hard uh, with this device to work, you know. And I get it for this device probably was not meant for that reason. It was just meant for uh, being a switcher. But again, just looking at, you know, the, uh, the the requirements of today to be able to live stream and such, eh, those those capabilities are not hard to build. So if, if HDMI uh, or if Blackmagic is listening, I, I really hope that they can uh, upgrade their firmware. Uh, it I What I would also like to do is just to maybe download their firmware and see if there is a way to customize it and maybe uh, there is some sort of an SDK available that I could just modify and um, and uh, see if I can add those features and but that is something that um, I look to do only if I have time. Um, okay, so that's about it for this video. The next video I will upload about get the, the challenges you will face in getting the data or, or the stream out of uh, out of this device for things like live streaming. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Bye.